you know, Trump for many years, I didn't, I mean, I understood why the Russia, why the media was doing this Russia stuff because it instills fear and, you know, Cold War nostalgia in, in an older audience on cable news. Yeah. But it, it never made sense to me because I don't know, I'm from New York and it was like an open secret that Donald Trump had done money laundering and all sorts of financial crimes for many, many years uh, in his real estate business. So came out the other day. Uh, let me read this from the New York Times. Uh, the New York Attorney General outlines patterns, pattern of possible fraud at Trump business. Uh, the New York State Attorney General Letitia James accused Donald Trump's family business late Tuesday of repeatedly misrepresenting the value of its assets to bolster its bottom line, saying in court papers that the company had engaged in, quote, fraudulent or misleading practices. The filing came in response to Mr. Trump's recent effort to block uh, Ms. James from questioning him and two of his adult children under oath as part of a civil investigation of his business, the Trump Organization. Uh, Ms. James' inquiry into Mr. Trump and the company is ongoing, and it's unclear whether her lawyers will ultimately file a lawsuit against them. Still, the filing marked the first time that the attorney general's office leveled such specific accusations against the former president's company. Her broadside ratchets up the pressure on Trump as he seeks to shut down her investigation, which he has called a partisan witch hunt. Uh, the yeah. filing outlined the filing outlined what Ms. James's office termed misleading statements about the value of at least six Trump properties, as well as the Trump brand. The properties included golf clubs in Westchester County, New York, and Scotland, flagship buildings such as 40 Wall Street in Manhattan, and Mr. Trump's own penthouse home in Trump Tower. Her filing argued that the company misstated the value of the properties to lenders, insurers, and the Internal Revenue Service. Many of the statements the filing argued were, quote, generally inflated as part of a pattern to suggest that Mr. Trump's net worth was higher than it otherwise would have separate would have appeared. Ms. James highlighted details of how she said the company inflated the valuations, 150,000 initiation fees into Mr. Trump's golf club in Westchester that it never collected, mansions that had not yet been built on one of its private estates and 20,000 square feet in his Trump Tower uh, triplex that did not exist. Quote, we've uncovered significant evidence that suggests Donald J. Trump and the Trump Organization falsely and fraudulently valued multiple assets and misrepresented those values to financial institutions for economic benefit. So, <laughs> so on one hand, the audience will say, Jordan, tell me something I don't know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but Tina, brand for Trump, yeah. But Tina, to me, this is kind of what was always perplexing. I mean, I didn't really cover Trump that much because I didn't, I don't, I didn't have much to add to it that right. wasn't already being covered twenty four seven. But they went at they, they they created this like new Cold War and like he's working with Russia, this and that. Like this kind of stuff, if you're like an investigative journalist, was there for the taking. Yeah. I mean, there was already <laughs> plenty of. Yeah, there was already opinion. there was already plenty of plenty of skeletons out there. Uh, if you watch on Netflix, it's called the American Dream, Donald Trump story, or something like that. They had a lot of details about this kind of uh, illegal stuff Donald Trump was doing. Uh, but what are your thoughts on a? Seems like the attorney general is going after him hard uh, and his yeah. family. A and B, you know, this is corruption. Democrat, Republican, he's corrupt. Uh, this sh should have been out there and you would think should have played a part in when he was running for president. He was able yeah. to kind of paper over it. But what are your thoughts on now that, that, that see, that's the, that's the, that's the heart of it, isn't it? Why was he able to paper over it? So you can't tell me that the lending institutions, the banks, all of these individuals that were, you know, the victims of his fraud weren't somewhat, somewhat suspicious that this stuff was going on. Like, I don't think that this is breaking news because it's just on brand for who Trump is. He has a history of doing these sorts of things, right? So the question to me is, why why wasn't that deeply investigated? Why weren't uh, the lending institutions that were on the raw end of the deal not saying anything about it? Was there a benefit there? I just, it doesn't make sense to me because I think this is very much not shocking and, and on brand and good for the AG, by the way, that Letitia's been doing some good work. Let's, let me just say that. I like that she went after Amazon too. Yeah. Well, the other thing also, and again, when I say open secret, I'll just, I'm not going to read this yeah, whole thing. No, but open it was, secret is sort of a thing, yeah. This was an open secret. Like, this is from BuzzFeed. This is from 2018. So credit to them. They actually were digging into this. Secret money. 
How Trump made millions selling condos to unknown buyers. A BuzzFeed, yeah. new, a, a BuzzFeed News review of every sale of a Trump-branded condominium in the United States provides the first comprehensive look at how many went to unidentified buyers, uh, buyers who paid cash, an indication of possible money laundering. So again, I remember when I was at the Young Turks, and yeah. I don't know, I was on a panel, and Jank Jank was like hysterical about Russia, and I'm like. You know what? There's not evidence. There's unfortunately there is no evidence that Trump. I don't think he's intelligent enough. I don't think his campaign was organized enough to work with Russia. But you know what? There is evidence of if you actually look into yeah. it. It might be less sexy. It doesn't have the Cold War theme, but there right. is evidence because there's been reporting among New York reporters and financial reporters that Trump has money laundered for for decades. For decades. That Trump, a lot of his real estate deals, he was in bed with the mafia. Uh, yeah. And all of this. So on one hand, I'm, you know, I don't care if he's a Republican, a Democrat. Corruption is corruption. I'm glad yeah. that the attorney general is going after him. Thus far, he's been Teflon Don. So I don't he's know. He's been Teflon Don for a reason. Right. I mean, honestly, so the, the fact that, yeah. So I think that 2018 BuzzFeed article is, is sort of like, you're right. It's an open secret. Like everybody knows that this is what this guy's been doing, including the lending institutions. How many times has he declared bankruptcy on another note? So, I mean, he has a he has a record of doing that as well. So what is the benefit to keeping this open secret more of a secret than not? Right. I don't know. I don't know. Because honestly, I've been wondering, it, maybe there's more that we just don't know about. Well, what exactly is the Southern How District of New York? Yeah. What exactly yeah. is taking so long? On Like, they should have access to his records at this point. Um, yeah. Well, what is exactly taking so long on the Southern District of New York, which is one of the most powerful local law, uh, you know, criminal justice agencies? What yeah. is taking so long in terms of the state attorney general? Because, again, this stuff has been out there for decades and it makes you wonder. I don't know. Who's benefiting from the corruption? You know what I mean? Like, I, I guarantee there's probably other politicians involved in much the same way that entire Michigan situation with Flint played out. It wouldn't surprise me if you had many layers to this onion. I don't, you know, it's not just the Trump organization that right. is uh, engaged in this. So, and we also know when he was doing this alleged criminal stuff, he also was had many, many relationships with New York politicians. Uh, he had many, many relationships with federal politicians that he was donating to their campaigns. Absolutely. So, so when you say who else could be implicated in that, there you go. Could be politicians, uh, local, federal, uh, could be a lot of other elites that somehow yeah. either were indirectly or directly part of this scheme. But yeah. politically, politically speaking, I think Trump is way more terrified. I don't really think he's so concerned about the January 6th thing because – I, I mean, I'm not a lawyer, but I don't know criminally like it would be hard yeah, to criminally, yeah. criminally prosecute and convict Trump because how do you prove yeah. he unless unless Trump infamously doesn't email, he doesn't even really use his phone. He uses AIDS phones. He doesn't text. So it's hard when criminal prosecutions, if you don't have a paper trail to prove he was part of the organizing of January 6th, like I think that would be a hard thing to prove. It's so I hard. think he. Yeah. Yeah, I think I don't think he's as concerned about the January 6th committee and stuff like that. I think he's super concerned about this because it has to do with his business, his family, and potentially if they actually went after him. Uh, maybe I'm naive. P some people say, Jordan, Donald Trump will never see prison. Maybe you're right. But technically for other people, this would be stuff you'd be thrown in prison for. Oh, absolutely. It's really grotesque white collar crime. You know, but this t I think you're right. I think that he is more afraid of this than he would be January 6th, um, because also this could stop him from another presidential run. And yes, he's considering this. I mean, he just had this big rally out in Arizona. Or not. This could actually this could act. No, this could actually expedite another presidential run because I see what you're saying. Okay. in the United Corporations of America right. are <laughs> absurd laws. Uh, the only way that he technically would be able to stay out of prison, if let's say they were actually going to go after him, uh, yeah. th uh, the laws say you can't indict a sitting president. 